Yo, yo, what's goody world? Just wanted to jump on here real quick. Give you guys a quick disclaimer before you watch the Steel Vaughn video. So, when we tried to upload this video, it got blocked immediately. Like, blocked, blocked. No monetization. You can't post it. Read all across the board. And that's happened a few times with videos or we'll upload a video and then that will happen and then we'll get a strike. Um, this time, they let us know it's going to get blocked. You can't even post this. So I took to YouTube, found a bunch of workarounds that people say worked. A lot of them didn't work. Anyways, in the midst of this, all these uploads I was doing of this one video, one of the videos went green. So when I went to play the video, I saw it was resized and it lost some resolution, but it's the only version of the reaction that went up clean. So I'm still going to post it, but I just wanted to give you guys this disclaimer um, because the video is not going to be the same quality as our other videos on the channel. If you guys can live with it, let me know because there's a few videos that when we try to upload it, they they're read automatically and if this method works on those videos we will upload them especially like the uh joey diaz sister hyacinth i think i pronounced that right they actually let us upload it then they blocked it so i'm going to try to re-upload that video using this method if you guys can deal <laughs> with what you guys are about to watch so let us know with that being said hope you guys enjoy <laughs> <laughs> talisa stupid i said baby you ready she said yeah, Joe Dirt. <laughs> it reminds me of Joe Dirt. <laughs> That's who Tio reminds T of. With the mullet right in the act. But, but Joe Dirt accent. If, <laughs> yo, oh my. F what? what? Could what? you what? imagine if Theo Vaughn played Joe, Joe Dirt? Dirt? It was made for him to play that. Oh, my God. We be... need new Joe Dirt movies, and Theo Vaughn has to be Joe Dirt. Somebody who knows Theo's watching. <laughs> Get that man on the line. We need Joe Dirt <laughs> reincarnated. What about the other guy? This could be his son. Oh, yeah. What was the other guy's name that played Joe Dirt? This could be his bastard son, huh? <laughs> uh, my boy, um... I don't remember. Oh, man, you don't put me on the spot. I don't forgot my boy name. I always do movies with um. We'll look it up later. <laughs> oh, I hate when that happens, man. <laughs> spade, David Sp uh, Spade. Something with a spade in. Some. It. I hate when I. I'm. I'm sorry, y'all. Anyway, we rambling on about uh, Joe <laughs> Dirt and Theo Bond playing Joe Dirt, even though it has an amazing idea. Uh, hopefully nobody else has talked about that on the internet and hopefully we are the first because then I would like to think that we are geniuses. <laughs> Baby, you ready to rock and roll? Yes. Theo Vaughn, me and Daryl Strawberry. The Daryl Strawberry story that y'all been telling us to do, I pray that these people do not block this video because this is what they uh, blocked for um, Sister Hyacinth, I believe, with my boy. Oh. And um, we got a strike. So let's rock. Let's go. So, I am 11 months sober, right? I'm a sober guy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I didn't want to be, but this is what happened. I was in New York City, right? New York City, New York. You know? Facts. Confusing to me. Never understood that. I thought New York, I thought Matt... Manhattan was just Manhattan, like you would say Manhattan, New York, but there, there's a New York, New York yeah. that, that I didn't, I still can't figure out that city. Maybe I'm an idiot. I don't know. I might be an idiot. They call it the same thing right back in front of each other just to really piss you off before you get there. You see what it's I mean? like we heard you in the beginning, you know, <laughs> but I was in New York City, uh, east of Hoboken. And I hadn't planned on doing any cocaine, okay? I planned on doing this much cocaine. That's a zero amount, you know? But apparently some cocaine had planned on getting together with me when it left its home that evening. Wait, so I what? went to this, this home. 
but apparently some cocaine had planned on getting together with me when it left its home that evening. <laughs> Why does the cocaine have a home? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bruh. I'm sorry, man. Why does a cocaine have a home, baby? It's a home. <laughs> it's an adult. It, it oh steps God. out. So I went to this party, man, and my friends were at this party, and uh, and I felt uncomfortable when I got to this party. Probably because, like, when I really think back on my life, like, I've always just felt uncomfortable, you know? Like, I don't know what it is. Like, my whole life has just been this constant struggle with every moment, like I'm just wrestling with every second just to feel okay. Like I don't even want to feel good. <laughs> just set me in the middle, you know? <laughs> so I'm at this party and I'm feeling how I feel regularly, <laughs> uncomfortable. Uh, so I decide to have some drinks because my friends are alcoholics and I'm competitive. <laughs> so I have a couple tequilas, right? And tequila, let's be honest, like pour Mexico right into your body, okay? I mean, make you jump a fence, you make you buy a gun, make you run across a highway with your family, make you knock a woman up, make you knock a woman down, okay? Olay, Janet, you know? So I had me a couple tequilas, and, uh, and I was feeling alive, you know? I was feeling a little more comfortable. Now, at 1.30 in the morning, I left, this, uh, I left this party because at 6.30 a.m., I had to be on the nationally syndicated radio program, the Opie and Jim Norton radio show. And, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a wonderful show that tapes there in New York City, New York. And, <laughs> and those are two men that I really admire, you know. And admire is when somebody's better than you, but you still like them. <laughs> It's an old-fashioned ideal. <laughs> so, at 1.30 a.m., I get into this taxi cab, right? This beautiful Asian girl that I do not know gets into the taxi with me. We're both headed the same way. They call it sharing a taxi, okay? <laughs> and this girl lays the back of her head right into my lap. And I'm thinking, fuck yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> New York's got these beautiful free Asian girls with every taxi ride. <laughs> this is a marvelous accoutrement to the city, you know? Uber, no thank you. Taxi, you have won me back. <laughs> so this girl's just laying in my lap and she just starts ruminating about her evening, you know? She said, she said she had a nice evening, but that her boyfriend wasn't in town, that he's never in town. Then she goes, what happens in taxis stays in taxis. And I'm not the brightest, you know, bowl in the bowl drawer, you know? <laughs> bowl in the bowl. Bowl drawer. Who the fuck putting bowls in a drawer? <laughs> Baby. Oh, my God. Yo, Theo, man. He's not human, bro. <sighs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. You ever wander into a sentence, you're like, how do I get out of here? <laughs> but I'm looking around this vehicle after she says that, and I'm thinking, this is a taxi, you know? <laughs> I mean, taxi me once, shame on me. <laughs> So I'm feeling kind of cavalier after her statements, right? I go down to make a kiss, you know? This young lady's laying in my lap. I go down to make a kiss. Now, trying to kiss somebody that's laying in your lap, that's a beautiful idea. <laughs> Until you get right here, okay? <laughs> and then you're just milling around like a lip rapist, bruh. I don't think James Bond could kiss a woman laying in his lap, okay? So she pushed me off of her. Um, she called me a creep. She called me a, she called me a pervert. Um, I'm definitely not a creep. 
And then it was awkward for a few blocks until she got dropped off wherever she was going. Uh, I'm not sure even where it was. I think it was like a halfway house for complete cunts or something. <laughs> and at that point, it's just me and the driver, you know? And, and I thought he said drugs. He, he could have said something else. English wasn't his first language, you know? He was bilingual. But I heard drugs in my head, you know? And so I said, cocaine! Like I was coaxed for Columbus, bruh. And we just landed on crack rock, you know? And I heard him accelerate that vehicle. And that's universal language for we're gonna get some cocaine. Cause that's a drug to me, you know? Weed, weed is a confusing spice. <laughs> I mean, weed will make you forget how to get home. Cocaine will make you forget how to get to heaven. <laughs> so we just drove, man. Man, we just drove, man. And uh, we drove for about a half hour into like North Harlem. Uh, if that's even a place, I don't even know. Uh, but it was a dark neighborhood. Uh, and that's not a euphemism. All the street lights were busted out. So you couldn't tell that it was predominantly black. But I grew up in a black neighborhood. I know when I'm back, you know? <laughs> and we got there, man, and I gave this dude some money. Nah, Theo Black. Theo said, I know when I'm back home, bruh. Like, you say, bruh. Theo be saying, bruh. T. Theo. Theo Black. Theo, Theo, Theo Black. Money. He gets out of the vehicle, comes back a few minutes later with some cocaine on him, you know? But he sits in the back seat next to me. A little alarming, you know? Kind of like when you're in the air on a plane and you see the pilot taking a piss and you're like, what the fuck, dude? Is this spirit? But this beautiful gentleman scooped up a little bit of cocaine on a car key, put it under my nose, killed that baby, bruh. Then I scooped him one and he killed his, man. And then, and, 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 and just, just a couple of dueling cocainists. <laughs> and we got high, man. Um, we got high for about 40 minutes. Damn. Dude, I, re I remember being so high at one point, I was like, dude, where the fuck is the driver, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. And he didn't know. <laughs> Jeez, so we sat there, man. We continued to get high together, me and this beautiful gentleman. And he said, Luigi, that was his name, Luigi. And I thought that was Spanish, you know? Uh, like that rare Italian Spanish. <laughs> so I start saying my name in Spanish, Teodoro. Cause I learned Spanish in Louisiana. <laughs> Let me stop and say this. Maybe he's ordered something. Tell me if I'm tripping, babe. Sergio. Sergio is that rare Spanish Italian. Is it though? Yes, because I know somebody from Italy named Sergio, and I and we know Sergio, and he's Puerto Rican. And black. Hmm. Am I tripping? Is Sergio one of those rare Italian Spanish thingamajigs that my boy talking about? Let me know. <laughs> So I start saying my name in Spanish, Teodoro. Because I learned Spanish in Louisiana. And my whole life, I thought Teodoro was Spanish for Theodore, which is my first name. About six months ago, this girl goes, that means I adore you. <laughs> Wish you would have told me at some other point, you know? Because it's fine, right? It's fine to tell people you adore them when you meet them. But when you're an hour deep into an eight ball, with a man who keeps saying he's Luigi and you just keep saying, I adore you to him. 99% of the time, this don't end heterosexually. So, ah, this is a long night, man. Uh, so he starts saying, I got a gift for you. I got a gift. And I grew up in like a broken neighborhood. You know, I thought it was gonna be his cock, you know? 
So I start practicing my like, see a cock, like don't be interested faces, you know? Like, So I'm running through the Rolodex of no cock for me faces. <laughs> and, uh, and then he keeps saying, I got a gif, a gif. I got a gif for you. Then I'm thinking it's like a thing on his phone, you know, like a GIF, you know? <laughs> like, a, like a disappointed walrus, you know? Like, Monday, Monday, Monday. Monday, Monday. <laughs> but then I hear on the taxi door, and I'm like, who knocks on a car door, dude? Come in or just be out there, you know? <laughs> Were you raised in a house of car doors in it? <laughs> so I'm like, come in. Because now I got to live in this shit universe they created by knocking. And a toot gets in. A prostitute, you know? Um, <laughs> a toot. You can't say pros. Pros is somebody that uh, have a prosthetic, you know? <laughs> and a toot get mad if you call them a pros, if, uh, if they got everything, you know? <laughs> so I'm being politically correct, and I'm saying this too, you know? And I respect prostitutes. I respect all women, you know? Whether they're a president or a prostitute, I respect them, man. Uh, you know, prostitute, probably a tougher job, let's be honest, these days, dude. You out there, middle of the night, slanging that canal, you know? <laughs> A lot of men are gay, market shares decline. So I respect prostitutes, man, but I don't want to deal with a prostitute tonight. I just want to do cocaine with my adorable buddy, Louis. You know? And this prostitute, man, she had like a, you know, she had a wig that covered, you could see about 60% of her face, okay? And to me, it looked like a man's face, right? Which is fine, you know? Um, no judgment there. I'm just saying, if I were on a game show called Guess 60% of This versus Face, <laughs> I would guess man first, you know? <laughs> but so we're all, uh, we're all back there getting high together and this prostitute starts making advances towards me. And I don't want a prostitute. So I start feeling uncomfortable, which is where I live at most of the time, so it only took me about half a lung to get there, you know? So I get out of the taxi into the street in North Harlem, right? Luigi comes out after me, because that's new friendship. And he's like, hundred dollars, hundred dollars, hundred dollars. So I give him a hundred bucks. I'm thinking he's gonna pay this toot. She'll go on about her business. We'll get back to, you know, uh, you know, friendship. <laughs> I look over a minute later, they're kissing on each other's necks, okay? He's investing my hundred back here with this prostitute. You know? I still have a $240 meter on the front of this taxi, right? So I'm out 360, not even in the vehicle. Unfair. <laughs> But I deal with my negative feelings outside of the car so I don't bring negative energy back into the vehicle, right? <laughs> then I get back into the taxi, but now I'm sitting in the front passenger seat, right? You can hear Luigi and the toot in the back. Um, you can hear the light rustlings of a blowjob, you know, kind of just, just simmering up into existence. <laughs> a good blowjob, too. It sounds like, you know, one you see on the internet, you know? <laughs> Sound like somebody's at a water park. And I respect what they're doing, man. But I still want to do cocaine by myself, right? So now I'm trying to be considerate and quietly do cocaine by myself, right? Just the softest little cokehead you ever met, dude. Just like a, just like a newborn rabbit just hopping upon a gram, you know? At one point, I was leaning my head back and just quietly dumping cocaine into the bottom of my nose. It was awesome, bruh. Luigi's in the back, dude. He's at the water park, bruh. He got that all-day wristband, dude. He don't give a fuck about me. He goes, you drive, you drive. <laughs> And this is when I knew I had a problem, man. Not specifically with drugs and alcohol, but with the way that I behave when I'm on drugs and alcohol. When I moved over into the driver's seat of this taxi, right? Put on my seatbelt. I remember asking them to put their seatbelt on. But they don't even make a seatbelt for all that activity, you know? We need seatbelt reform. I've been saying this. 
Bruh, wait. Okay. This is my first time seeing Theo do stand up. I guess we would call this stand up. Even though it's basically storytelling. Right. Bruh, he is stupid. And he know how to tell those in between jokes. That seatbelt reform in between joke. That's that's what's so damn funny. Cause how? Why are you thinking of this shit? Why are you thinking of this, Theo? And I started this vehicle, and I drove us off into North Harlem, man. At four fifteen in the morning, just driving. Drove for probably about twenty minutes. Didn't know where I was. You know, my brain's like, damn, dude, you're lost. It's 4.30 in the morning, man. You're high on cocaine. <laughs> but at least you're working. <laughs> at least you're out here making money for your family, okay? <laughs> I don't have a family, dude. <laughs> More importantly, I don't drive taxi, bro. <laughs> but then my brain also goes, but man, you don't have a commercial driver's license as if that was gonna be an issue when the cop stops us. <laughs> There's empty cocaine bags everywhere, right? Like, look like I've been washing my face with powdered donuts. <laughs> There's sex crimes in the back seat, <laughs> potentially gay sex crimes in the back seat. <laughs> and that officer's just gonna be like, that's all for naught, young soldier. You don't have a chauffeur certificate. But that's what got me to pull over, man. I pulled over, I left a couple hundred dollars on that car seat. I started walking off, man. I walked about three blocks, got into a regular taxi, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I even made him pop the trunk just to make sure that spare tire wasn't shooting up in the back, you know? <laughs> I get to my hotel, it's 5.30 in the morning. And in one hour, I gotta be on the nationally syndicated radio program, the Opie and Jim Norton radio show two men that I really admire. So I finished doing my cocaine. Cause you can't not finish your cocaine, dude. Try to not finish your cocaine. I will watch you try. What do they put in it? Cigarettes? I took three showers in 10 minutes, son. And dried off after each one, bro. You don't know me. <laughs> then I start walking to the radio station, right? It's five blocks uh, to the Sirius building. Halfway there, I realize that I have on jeans with sweatpants over them. <laughs> Something I've never worn before because nobody's ever worn it. I'm the Neil Armstrong of pants this morning. I get up to the radio station. They tell me I got to be in the air for three hours. There's a million listeners, right? I can't feel my face <laughs> with either hand. <laughs> Highest I can feel my neck running on neck thoughts. <laughs> and the other guest for the day is Daryl Strawberry. <laughs> oh, shit. oh, shit. I forgot this was about right. Daryl Strawberry. <laughs> Oh, holy shit. This shit almost over. <laughs> what? Yeah. Who's in the Hall of Fame? He's a Hall of Fame baseball player, and he's in the Hall of Fame for cocaine. <laughs> Wasn't the eight ball as beautiful man couldn't hit, right? <laughs> and bless his heart, man, he's 13 years sober, and he's eloquent and successful and well put together, and he was some of these ideas that I, maybe I envision myself as, but this morning I'm showing up, you know, nothing like that, you know? Um, so it just made me think like, dude, you gotta tighten up, you know? Uh, and I'll say this too about Daryl Strawberry, man. I have big nostrils. Daryl Strawberry got the biggest nostrils you've ever seen. <laughs> I'm not saying it to shame him. It's not an ethnic thing. This man got dead stars at the bottom of his nose, okay? And I just say it so that you understand he didn't stand a chance against a fine powder. This beautiful man could kill a spice rack from 70 feet away, okay? Take that, nutmeg. What you looking at, coriander? But on this day, he was everything I needed to see, you know? Uh, so yeah, so that's when I got sober and now I've been sober for 11 months. Uh, and I'm Theo wait. Vaughn. Thank you for having me. You guys be good. Wait, 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 wait. That's all 
Daryl Strawberry had to do with the story. That, well, that said, was his turning point for being getting sober. So he had to by was, seeing nostrils the size of dead stars. No, he said he saw him. He was successful. He was well put together. He was there. Yeah. You know. Okay. And so he wanted to be, you know, get on that that that, that vibe. path. Yeah. That's what's up, man. I fuck with that, Theo. You know, I got a little coke in me. You know what I mean. <laughs> I was like, do you? Uh, wait a minute. Well, you know. I get it. About my yeah, I have, yeah, to, get, yeah, I have yeah, to think yeah, about yeah. that. It's just funny, man. When I hear Coke stories, I think about my dad. May he rest in peace. I love mm-hmm. your pops. But my pops was a was a functioning addict, man. And boy, he, like, everything he's saying is true about him. The quiet, try to be quiet in the next room. We're like, boy, we hear you. We hear you in there <laughs> sniffing that shot in Ola Pop. Bring your ass out here. Cook that goddamn chicken and that white mac and cheese he used to make. Such a delicious meal. <laughs> like, comment, share. Theo, man. Theo, you a goat, man. Uh, send more Theo Vaughn clips. If he has any stand-ups, please let us know. Again, this was our first time seeing him. I'm always seeing him in a podcast setting. Just yeah. being funny as shit. Um, like, comment, share, and please subscribe. We out of here. Peace.